I think for the girls, it's a little bit more difficult, especially nowadays with social media and how social everybody is. They are getting on social media younger, I feel like. Um, and they see their friends out and they see their friends on these vacations and they see their friends doing all these things. And, you know, on a Friday night, no, you can't go. You have, we have to be up at five o'clock in the morning. Um, so I think it's not, like you said, it's not only the parents that were making these sacrifices, it's the kids too. Welcome to the car ride home. I am so excited today uh, for our car ride to be joined by Maria Jennings. I'm going to call you like super mom. That's going to be your title. I know you're so much more than that and we'll dive into it. But um, we've had we've had different requests in the car ride home. You are the first parent conversation. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is definitely dedicated to the parents out there. Maria, welcome to the car ride home. Thank you. It's so exciting to be here. I'm excited. I trust Jamie. I've known her for quite some time. So this is going to be fun. I'm excited. That's what, when I was thinking about parents, I'm like, oh, I know somebody and I, <laughs> we have, I will dive into uh, how long we have known each other and I've gotten to watch your girls play as yes. well. Yes. So we, uh, we call it the car ride home for a reason. I'm sure you've spent many, many car rides um, <laughs> to and from practice and games. Yeah. So we, we have to set the stage. You're actually in charge right now of the music. So what are we listening to in the car ride home? It'd probably be some island music, some J-Bug or um, Spawn Breezy, uh, Bob Marley, some reggae. Right now, that's probably what I'd be listening to. I like it. At, yeah. Now, when did um, when did you give the girls control versus when you controlled the music? Or did you always control it? Well, we seem to think we're cool parents. So all of our music, the kids like. Um, the only thing now is just the hard rap. We never really got into that side of it. But I mean, we grew up with Snoop. We grew up with, you know, NWA and all the rap we started in, I feel like. So our kids, you know, they don't think we're cool, but my husband and I, and my husband is like the most versatile music guy ever. He has every genre on his um, Spotify. He has followers, like it's crazy. But um, so my kids are pretty okay with our, with our music. I think you're cool parents. Ah, oh, thanks. <laughs> the next most important question besides music is where are we stopping to eat on the car ride home? Um, oh, either Chick-fil-A. Well, I should go back to when it all first started and my oldest daughter, Tiara, was addicted to Subway. It was every weekend, every day, the same sandwich. And it was oh, like great. And she's still pretty um, particular in this way she eats. So she still eats Subway to this day, which you would think after a while you'd get sick of. But at that time it was Subway. Then we kind of graduated to, we got into Panera thanks to, you know, Mike Stith, um, and Ch probably, uh, Chipotle and Chick-fil-A. That's staples. probably everybody's, you know, everybody's somewhat trying to be healthy. And then, you know what the new popular one is, uh, Kava has been a popular answer. So that is Tella's favorite. So in the last couple of years when we were playing with Bat Busters, um, we were practiced down at, at J. Sarah. And on the ride home, about two or three miles from the field was a kava. And every weekend with Ella, with everybody, they would, we would stop at kava every and Saturday and Sunday. And they want kava. But yes, I like kava. I think it's great. Me too. I'm going to get them yeah. to sponsor the podcast here. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm so interested in your perspective. Um, I, car rides really are synonymous with, uh, with youth sports, I feel like. Mm -hmm. Do you have, when I ask you of one of the most memorable car ride home, especially uh, being a mom at, at different points of your daughter's careers or even your son's career too, what, what's the most memorable car ride home that you can think of? Well, if you want to be truthful, I want to be truthful. I mean, you know, you look back at just raising the, the girls and our kids and in the beginning, it was tough because after the practice or after the game, you know, you would get upset and you would, you know, what happened? You had, you know, what are you looking at that, you know, third strike for? 
And sometimes I'm going to be honest, they would cry and or you'd be like, oh gosh, you know, or, and I've had some memorable one of those or with my husband and I, and we would tag team and, but after, and that was probably like in 10 U and, and 12 U. But once we really started playing for Mike Stipp, he really, he really focused on, let me be the bad guy. Let me yell at them. Your car ride home should be the parent loving, you know, and, and he has that experience with his girls. So we thought, you know, there's truth to that. So we just, not saying that it, we were perfect after that, but, you know, it was a different way. I think we spoke about it, but, you know, most of the time the car rides home on the way back, they would sleep because they were exhausted. We were driving <laughs> to two hours away and we're just trying to stay awake and everything. So, I mean, I'm sure a lot of the parents can, you know, attest to that, that most of the time after the first probably five, 10 minutes you're talking, then they're passed out. That's so hard. Did, did you guys ever talk going into a car ride? You know, you're, you're watching a game and you're maybe frustrated and it's like, okay, we need to take a breath. Did you have a strategy before the car ride started of like how you got it out so that? No, most of the time it would be my husband saying something. And then, but when I chimed in, oh, then I was angry, you know, something, they said something, but we never had a strategy. Um, and, and then what would happen later on is obviously we had to split up because, you know, we had three kids and one would be with one and the other would be with the other two or vice versa. So again, we'd probably get in the car ride if I was with Tiara and she would just be like, I'm passed out. I'm exhausted. And it's true. You know, after playing five games, you know, you'd feel, you'd feel bad and all right, her dad can deal with this later on. I'm just going to let her sleep and get some food and we're going home. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't want to be the bad guy anymore. What's the difference of Tiari and Telly and how they reacted after um, after maybe it was a tough practice or tough game or tough tournament? Tiari um, was a little bit more methodical in the way she spoke and had she just has always had this high IQ. So if you said something, she had an answer. Well, Mike said this, and this is what I was doing. And, yeah. and then you're like, you know, oh, okay. And I played softball. You guys have never played softball. You guys were volleyball, football. So she was very thought, thoughtful in what she would say, and, and she knew how to word things. Tilly was a little bit more um, sensitive, um, in, in the beginning, when we were in high school, she would get very sensitive. And I think for her, it was a little bit tough because she had her older sister. Uh, she was under that shadow a lot. So we had to be very, very, you know, we chose our words carefully because we didn't want to think her to think we were comparing them. So we, we did have, like you said, I guess a strategy in that sense when we would talk to Tele versus Tiare. But Tiari always had something, something to say, something. And and she did make sense. Like she knew what she was saying and she knew what Mike said. She, this is what we've been working on. And I'm, I, I got to get out of this and I'm working on keeping my hands up or something versus, you know, my bad angle or whatever. She would always have an answer. I love that. It's so, yeah. especially knowing your two daughters too. So <laughs> I, I think that was a, a selfish question. I, I want to go back. Uh, actually, first, can you give us, because I you said you were you would be in Norman. Give it, This is the true life of a mom in or a parent mm -hmm. managing college softball players. Can you explain where you are and how you manage your time during the, the college season? Well, right now I'm in Norman. I just got here late last night and I'm staying out here for about 10 days. And then my husband's back at home and then he's going to be with Tele and drive down to San Diego this weekend and be with her. So this season um, has been the only season that we will have to deal with the flip-flopping, but we, throughout the entire season, I think there's um, from February when we first started the second or the 10th, when we first started softball and hopefully when the season's over, there's probably only two entire weekends. We have been home that we were, or that we will be home. Um, and we've already had those. 
so <laughs> moving forward, uh, there isn't a break. Um, but it's this season obviously has been the most challenging due to, to, to both of them playing. It's just like back in travel ball where you had to split up your time. You're traveling here, you're traveling there. Um, but this season obviously is you know, all the previous years we've been able to be together, but this season um, has been a little bit more challenging in the sense where we're just splitting up again. And, um, but it's been fun. It's, it's, you know, obviously a, a different, um, the weather's different, you know, you're coming out to Oklahoma and right now here in Oklahoma, it's probably going to be in the 80, 78, eighties this weekend. And then back in San Diego, it's cold again. So it's been fun with the weather. You're like, okay, where am I at? What do I have to wear? What, <laughs> what is it? Do I have to bring my heater? It's, it's funny. Like, it's it's <laughs> you, been fun though. I feel like um, calendar management and packing lists, there's gotta be some secrets to success that you've oh, developed over time. Like, well, with the calendar, I am still old school and I use a desktop with different colors and highlighting. So um, I'm more visual and I don't like to look at my phone all the time. So I'm just like, and I'm on my desk because I work from home. So I see my calendar all the time. So it's just kind of nice. And then my husband and I are, okay, what are we doing? Who's going to this series? Who's going to that series? You know, we're, and we do have to sit down and plan that out. Um, but, um, it's worked out and it's, we're, we're just lucky we've been able to, you know, be bo at both of their games. Can you go back in time? Uh, let's first, your background first, okay. uh, you said, Tiari said you didn't play softball, but give me, give me your background uh, of growing up, especially in the, the sports scene. So I played sports late. I was a late bloomer. Um, but I started playing sports, not until I was in high school and I've always kind of been that jock athletic type, but I played soccer and I played volleyball and I was fast. So, but I loved, I, I loved it. And even then in a junior college, I played soccer. And then after college in adult leagues in Manhattan beach, I'd play in co-ed soccer leagues for a long time, many years. And so I continued with soccer my whole life. And my husband played football and basketball. So with the softball, what happened with the girls was my niece, Kehlani Jennings, she played travel ball. So in, we would go down and watch her play travel ball when she was young and she was always playing multiple sports. And so Tiara and was young. I mean, we're talking like six years old. And, and at that time, we still had the men's sports, but we would start going to her travel ball games. But at that time, TR is playing soccer because I played soccer and I knew soccer and I was coaching, you know, soccer at the AYSO level for her. Um, and so I wanted, I was pushing more soccer and, and everything. So, I mean, it's just, it's, it just kind of how it went through, but she always says, mom, dad, you guys never played D1 so softball. You never played D1 sports. That's kind of like the running joke in our family. And I'm like, well, we could have, we were just, you know, we met each other and we had different, you know, it's different, different ideas. It worked out. <laughs> well, you beat me to it. That's what I was going to ask with your soccer background. You know, did, did that play, you know, how did that play into, into Tiari's? And that's what I was curious of how her journey started. I think I met Tiari when she was about 13, 14 and already deeply immersed in, in the travel ball world. But when she was first, uh, when she first started playing, what did, what did that look like? So, this is a funny story. Um, Tiare was playing. We wanted to sign her up for soccer for AYSO, but she, her birthday was in June and she was only four and a half. And we were going to play with some of our friends of ours. And we had to forge her birth certificate to make her older to play soccer on this team. She had to be five or five and a half. I forget what it was. So I think we just changed the birthday. You know, that's when typewriter was in. And we put her birthday as she was born in, instead of 2002, she was born in 2001. So usually people are trying to make themselves you know, younger. We were trying to make her older. Make older. <laughs> and her very first game, I'm not even kidding you, she scored like six goals, like just, just dominated. So I was like, yes, I got my soccer player. You know, I had cousins who played in the Olympics. My dad played, you know, soccer He in college. So I, soccer was just part of our entire life. Um, 
And then she played soccer and she had played club soccer for quite, I mean, many years. And then we started playing um, softball and she was playing travel softball and club soccer all the way up until sixth grade. And then we had to make, once we got to Batbusters and Mike, we were like, okay, Tiara, you got to make a decision on what you want to do. And then she chose softball. And I was like, oh my God, you're breaking my heart. And so that was it. And that's, and then, so from that point on about 12 years old, she started playing softball full time. That, that was going to be another question there is, um, and it's funny. I think the softball world is all saying, thank you that, uh, that she did choose that she did choose softball, but was that her decision? So when you went to her, Absolutely. you just gave it up completely. To Absolutely. Her. And we, I mean, that was one thing that my husband and I throughout all of our kids' careers, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to play, we're going to support you. Um, the nice thing about, and the parents will love this too, is we were blessed. Mike was very, he was not opposed to people playing multiple sports. So we went to a Catholic school. My kids all went through Catholic school and in middle school and probably like actually, actually fifth grade, they have a league called the Catholic Youth Organization. So it's called CYO and you play other schools in your league. So you actually have volleyball, basketball, softball, um, baseball for the boys. There's archery. There's a bunch of different things. So my kids played after school sports um, throughout eighth grade, all the way up until eighth grade. So Tiari played basketball. We, she played softball and she played volleyball and she fell in love with volleyball then. Um, and, and T Tella did the same thing. She played multiple sports all the way up through eighth grade. And we won like the CYO championship for softball. We went the final four and basketball, things like that. And then when Tiari went to high school, she continued to play volleyball and, um, all through four years of high school, she played volleyball as well. Um, we let the volleyball team know that this is her second sport. So if we miss things, we're going to miss it here. But her senior year, there was this big soft volleyball tournament, this high school tournament. And like, like, go ahead and play, you know, so she played, but she loved it. She, I think if she was, you know, six foot one, six foot two, she would have played volleyball. It was fun. She had a good time. Do you think that's important for them to play? I, absolutely. Play? I have been blessed, knock on wood, with Tiare, not to have anything major happen in, in, in um, it on her, her, her whole career. She had a sprained ankle one time from volleyball. Mike wasn't too happy about that, but it happened. Um, and then that was the only thing that ever happened to her playing multiple sports. Um, but I think that kept all her, the muscle memory just from being the same thing, you know, um, I think that was, it was good for them. It was good for their bodies um, to just to use their their joints and their muscles in different capacities. Um, and the same with Tele. Tele has had weird injuries that were kind of unlucky. Um, uh, as a little girl, Tele was in a go-kart accident at like six years old, and she actually doesn't have a left pinky finger. Oh, wow. And a lot of people did not know that about her. Um, and so softball was tough for a while for her because of the glove and she was little and she didn't have, um, a lot of strength, you know, because she was tiny at that time. And, and then as she started playing, Mike actually got her a glove, a baseball glove to, so she can put her, um, ring finger in it to help with that. Um, and then sometimes when she would bat her fingers up. Because, but, and she didn't ever want to, she never wanted to like cut it off. I told her I can cut the top off and sew it. And she, and then sometimes the umpire is like, your finger, you're going to get hurt. She goes, oh, I don't have a finger. And they're like <laughs> staring at her like, what? <laughs> and then she had a, a, an unlucky injury, you know, her junior year and she broke her leg really bad and had to have surgery out in Oklahoma. So that was a tough one. But besides that, I really do help think it has helped with in the, especially ACL, you see a lot of the ACL injuries, um, shoulders, things like that. I think it, it was good for them and strengthened those areas. 
Uh, absolutely. I, you know, I realize too, and I'm watching my sister go through it with, with two young girls who are very active, the commitment, and my parents did it as well, the commitment that parents make, because it's not just the kid that's sacrificing birthday parties and, you know, get togethers and weekends, the parents, oh, yeah. how do you, I mean, how did you guys, man, did you go through ebbs and flows of growing up of like, man, we want our weekend or you just found ways to make, make the most of it and enjoyed watching the girls? No, absolutely. Especially um, when you're first starting off in rec ball and, and then you go to all stars, cause that's also pretty, you know, every weekend you're playing an all star and you're traveling a little bit and that's how you get the taste of it. But when she started travel ball, I remember when uh, we were with our very first travel ball team and it was mother's day weekend. And I'm like, mom, we have a tournament. And she's like, wait, what? Like the family, your, your, your family is not understanding what you're quite doing, you know? Um, and, Oh, we can't come to that wedding that weekend, mom. We have a, we have, you know, a tournament, we have this, we have that. And hmm. it was, it was like, what's going on. And, after a while, you learn to juggle it. I would, I would tell my husband, it's Mother's Day. I'm going to go to my mom's for breakfast, and then I'll meet you at the games. You know, you start learning to adjust a little bit. But I think for the girls, it's a little bit more difficult. And I think especially nowadays with social media and how social everybody is, you they, they are getting on social media younger, I feel like. Um, and they see their friends out and they see their friends on these vacations and they see their friends doing all these things. And, you know, on a Friday night, no, you can't go. You have, we have to be up at five o'clock in the morning. Um, so I think it's not, like you said, it's not only the parents that were making these sacrifices, it's the kids too. And, yeah. and it, it's, it's tough. I mean, and there are some kids who don't mind missing it. Tiari was one of those kids who didn't mind, um, she didn't mind uh, missing her. She didn't go to a formal dance or freshman really sophomore year. She went to like homecoming a couple things, but she wouldn't miss practice. We wouldn't go get her hair done. We wouldn't go get her makeup done. Um, she wouldn't ask to leave early. And so we'd get home and it was like, hurry up. We got to get dressed, get your makeup done. And you know, you, the moms always think of this moment. Oh, we're going to go have a, go get your hair done and go do this. Now it wasn't like that at all with, with that tiara and she didn't care. She goes, pull my hair in a slick back ponytail. I'm fine. You know, like, <laughs> so, but I, it is, it's difficult. It's, we had many uh, issues and fights and, and, you know, and these coaches too, I look back now, the coaches are also sacrificing. You think they want to miss, you know, a, a, a wedding or they're doing the same thing we are. You know, do you think they want to get up at five o'clock in the morning every weekend? They don't. And I never realized it then. I never looked at it from that point. I'm like, God, it's Mother's Day. Why can't we just stay at home? I mean, obviously they have a wife. They have their moms. Don't you think, you know, they want to do the same thing, but... This is what we signed up to do. That's such such yeah. a good point. <laughs> was was Telly different from uh, from Tiari on that aspect of like Telly was a little bit different stuff? in a sense where she 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 was more social um, because she she wanted to do a little bit more than Tiari does, and I think and that's okay. I mean, and I think that's where you have to balance your children's needs and wants and. Um, and even to this day, though, Tele is still more social and still likes to hang out with her friends and be at the pool where Tiari's watching games or watching the Final Four basketball or like she's on the phone with her dad. And they're watching the games. Like, I mean, that's just she's just sports oriented. And Tele has that about half of that. You know, sometimes she does and other times, nope, I just want to disconnect and I want to go do my thing. It's so, I mean, I have a sister, we're very similar, but very different. And I'm sure yeah. many people out there with multiple children, you know, it, it's so different. So managing two girls and yes. even, you know, as they're, they're growing up, um, how do you do that? And how did you, and I think the other thing too, is like, how do you, um, keep each one's journey a little separate, I guess, if you will. Well, I think. You know, as you're going through it, it's a little difficult. 
um, because you don't know what you're doing is right or wrong. Um, and we also had a son. So we have a son, Eli. And we, because of Tiari's journey, and at, we always kind of knew that she was a different and had a little bit of extra, her IQ and what she wanted and her drive. Where our other kids, like Eli had the same IQ as like um, in baseball. And I think if he would have stuck with baseball, it would have been a game changer. But the girls would go to his games and they're in the outfield and she, he'd strike out and they'd be like, you suck. Like it was so competitive in our family. And he played baseball for you know a number of years, but now he switched over to football. So, and he's growing. If you saw Eli now, you wouldn't even recognize him. He's taller than the girls now. I mean, he's just, he's just blossomed in the last eight months. But, you know, with Tele, we, she, I think she did what we had her do because that's what we knew with Tiari. Mm -hmm. So not much of a choice, uh, like, okay, you're going to play. She did play soccer and she did play softball and she also made the choice but we thought with her, she was going to make the choice to play soccer. And when she chose softball, we were like, really? All right. All right. Let's go. If we're going to do this, we're not going to change anything. You're going to get the same work. You're going to put the same effort in it. You're going to, you know, and, and some, those, those were the car rides where oh, I don't feel like going I'm like, Oh, well, we're going to STC and tell it Terry's workout. You're working out. You know, it's just, it was just, it was, she didn't have a choice. So like you chose softball, like that's what we, you're the one who chose this sport, you know? So this is what we do. Um, but there was, it was more a little bit butting heads with her on that. But when she was there, she was fine. When she was with her teammates, she was fine. It was just, it's like us now when I want to go work out, I'm like, I don't want to work out. And when you do, you're like, oh, okay, that's a bad, that's a bad. I remember the first time, uh, my first vivid memory of Tiari was 14U at WFC in Kansas City when I was hosting mm -hmm. the, the WFC. And she leads off the semifinal with a home run, leads off the championship game with a home run. But it, And I think it was the next year that I was sitting in the dugout with Tony Mascarenas, who was coaching 12 and under at the time. Yeah. And she points to a teeny tiny skinny <laughs> little scene. She's like, that's Tiari's little sister. Yeah, And she was so tiny and tiny. now she's this just like super athlete yes like beautiful like I'm like wow you are so grown up now and that's but the I difference like tell has been a late bloomer for everything she's ever done and she's her growth um just in her height and I always we thought she was gonna remain tiny we switched her from a righty to a lefty because she, I'm perk Filipino, so I'm like, okay, my grandma's four ten. Look at you, you're going to probably be five foot four, like I am, or something, you know. Where Tiari in the eighth grade was already, you know, you saw her. She was already, I mean, she was still pretty thin, but she was. She, you saw that she wasn't this the tiniest on the team. I mean, Tele was the tiniest on the team all the way up and probably until tenth grade, ninth grade. Like, I mean, it was late. She blossomed much later than. Um, Tiari did and but um, yeah she just I, I have pictures of her with Ella Parker and Maya Bland and all these girls down who are playing you know for Oklahoma or, or whoever and Tele was like a whole head and a half smaller than these girls and now she's taller than them you know so it, it was it's it's neat to see Tele's progression because she really stuck through it and and she put in the work that she has needed to do to get to where she's at. And, and it's neat to see her now doing her thing, owning it and working out extra, you know, she has Shay Knighton's her coach and MJ Knighton and they're amazing. And, and it's neat to see her say, you know, Oh, I, I, I asked coach Shay, you know, let's go do let's, I need some extra batting practice and she's going to do that. And, that's neat to see like her growth and her development in that now awesome. as she's gotten older. Yeah. That's awesome. I looked at it and for anybody at Telly's a, a freshman at San Diego and I yes. looked and she's right there yeah. leading the team in many offensive categories. Yeah, it's too. been fun. 
What can you explain as a parent to her? Because being a late bloomer and going through the injury too at a very significant time, what was that recruiting journey like for for you guys as a parent? For Tele, it was difficult because it literally happened. She was just coming around. She she's already she was just and this was like her sophomore year, hitting home runs, and we were doing really well. And we it was like the third tournament in June where we had a we came out to Oklahoma, and we were playing a I forget what Texas team we were playing, and she had just hit a she had to hit a bomb like a, oh I mean and just great. We're like so excited. There was a ton of colleges watching her, and then we're on defense and then the next play her the center fielder collided and she went down and I'm just kind of sitting there watching and my husband's like I think she you know he texted and saw it on you know um online and he's like I think she knocked the wind out of her and I go ahead probably and I'm just kind of sitting there and I'm watching and then the umpire comes kind of jogging in and, and he said um call the ambulance and I was like, oh, what? So I started jogging over there. And as I passed the third base dugout, you can just hear screams. Ugh. And then on my way out there, Tim Shockey, our coach at the time, um, he came, he goes, you don't want to see it. And I was like, ugh. But eventually, of course, I saw it. And her leg was just kind of like twisted. And um, it was a blessing that it happened in Oklahoma. I was able to call Coach Patty Gasso right away, like, where do I take her? What hospital do I go to? Um, so the ambulance came and it just was devastating. She was devastated. But at the same time, through her progression, and I love her fight, like during the fall of that year, with the minute she can, it, it was a good seven month recovery. It was tough. But during that fall season, you know, She's like, I want to go to down to DA. I want to go work out on my upper body. I want to, and she couldn't hit at that time at practice. She would go to practice, do whatever little, little thing. She could barely even throw because it was her right leg and she shattered her fib tib, has a rod in, has screws. And um, she just came back and worked harder than ever. And it was very impressive to see. And that's, we knew at that point, Okay, she she continue she wants to continue this. She wants to continue to play softball in college. So we at just that point we're trying to do whatever we could for her, and she put in the work. And um, we are blessed during that time in June that this one weekend in um, Rosetta she had a, like a grand slam. She had to hit like five or six home runs that weekend, and Coach MJ was watching her and from the beginning until her injury, she would follow up on us. Like she's like, I want her. I want her. I don't care. I want her. And I think her injury was put off by some coaches because it was a, it was, yeah. it's, it's a pretty, even now if she, you know, if, if she does something and if it's cold, you know, it's like a little limp, you know, like there's things that still, but she's pushed past it and has gone through it. And it's, it's been a really, a really neat transition to see her to go to see where she's at today. That's awesome. Well, yeah. I, I just saw you guys um, in the last year in the national yes. championship series. Yes. And she was on the team that, that won our 18 U national championship. Yes. And and I mean this in the most respectful way too. Right. Telly had her scholarship. Yeah. She's going to college. She's on that team playing with girls. She's probably played it forever. She wasn't a starter. No. How, there's a lot of parents, I think, that can can learn from this. We live in the era of a transfer portal. It's probably even more prevalent at Travel Ball, where it's very right. easy nowadays to say, oh, I'm not playing. I'm just going to pick up and go over to this team. Right. Can you talk through that as a family of the discussions that you guys are having and, and why you chose to to stay, too? Well, and sometimes it wasn't always agreeable, but we knew she was in the best place. We knew she was in the best of hands with being with the Batbusters and Mike Stiff. We knew at practice, we knew at, even at the games, just because you aren't playing doesn't mean you can't learn the game. Um, she was very active, very um, accessible with her teammates. She still saw the game and said, hey, this is this girl's pitching this way. I mean, she could, 
she could, it was a funny joke. Mike would say, Telly knows when the changeup's coming. Like she started picking up. Yeah. Like doing all. Yes. Yeah, just picking up the game. And so she, I think it was good for her to learn the other game. I mean, again, like you said, she was playing against all these girls or going to these big schools. Um, but she all, she never wanted to leave that team and we never wanted her to leave that team, but it would have been her choice and we could understand to get more playing time. But that doesn't necessarily, you have to still put in the work. You still have to go to practice every day. And the way, obviously, you know, Mike, you know how our Bat Busters is structured, but practices were like games. I mean, we did pickles. We did, you know, everything that you would, that you would need in order to, to be in a game. And in the times when we did play and, and there were games, she got to play, you know. Obviously, in the championship game, if you're on a close game, she's not going to get playing time. And we knew that. We knew our role. And I think that's what's hard for certain people. They, they just have to understand their role. Every single team you're on, it doesn't matter if you're in rec ball, it doesn't matter if you're in travel ball or in college, high school, there are girls who play and there are girls who do not. And... I think, but everyone contributes and everyone has a say on the team and there's no one less or no one bigger than the team. So I think it's important for people to realize, you know, what do you want to get out of this? If, if you want to play college softball, you want to continue on your journey, you have to know what coaches are out there that are going to get you there, what organizations are going to help with all of that. Um, and you just have to stick with it. I mean, we've been blessed to be with an organization that truly has meant family to us that preached it, not, you know, not only preached it, but they are. Um, so we always knew she was in the best of hands. And even at practices, if she's out in the outfield taking reps and she does something, you know, Mike's going to correct her. Tell it. What are you doing? You got to get under that more. Don't, you know, not your first step. So I think that's what's helped her to get where she's at today. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that's what's helped her get to where she's at today. And I always felt pretty confident that I know that once she graduated from Batbusters and going on to the next level, she was going to be fine. And, and I, we always felt that way. And thank God, you know, it's worked out that way. I just, I think so many parents can learn from from you and Nas and just yeah. what I mean, and you're also like the ultimate national championship parents <laughs> now too. You've been through it in every capacity. Yes. Can you? What is that moment being a, a mom of girls that are participating and probably one day Eli too because that's what your family does. <laughs> but what is that moment like of be, being the parent in the stands and controlling those emotions, the ups, the downs? What's your advice to, to parents in those? Moments? I mean, it's, it's a blessing. Like it's, it's, it truly is. I mean, you have to take the moment just to, to think like, wow, this is, I can't believe this is really happening. I can't believe, um, they're, they're, they're doing it though. You know, you, you have to think like, wow, we, we raised them and we did the best that we can and we put them in the best situations that we can um, and, and you take those chances again, even though you put them with the best of the best, does it mean you're going to get those outcomes, right? You hope, and that's what you play for, but you never know. I mean, um, so I think it's just, it's just, it's really when we're out there, it's insane. I mean, being in the world series is, it, it is beyond your imagination. I mean, Mike Stith went out there for last year and he, you see it on TV and you're like, Oh my gosh, like this is crazy. Um, for example, even with love stadium. Okay. So the first weekend it opened up, I was there. Nosh wasn't. So I went live on my Instagram feed and I walked around the stadium and people joined and then he came a few weeks after and he said, your video was it didn't do it justice. So it's kind of like that same thing where you see it on TV, you, but the atmosphere is so electric and everybody, it doesn't matter if you're, you're playing against, you know, Texas or Oklahoma state or UCLA. It's so neat though, too, because all your friends are there too from the opposite team. 
And so it's like, oh gosh, they're up. You're, you're, my Brady's, you know, Tiara's a really good friends up right now. And you, you know, you, you want the best for the girls, but it's still competition. And it's, it's been fun. I mean, we've had a fantastic run and we couldn't be more thankful for it. What is it like? Um, you talked about just your friends too. Like a lot of people talk about the culture of youth sports in general, not just softball mm-hmm. and the, the parents can ruin it. But there's also there's great parents out there. And what what's your advice? Because I'm sure you've heard things in the stands. Oh, you know, yeah. I'm sure you've been on teams with parents that maybe weren't the best parents. Right. Um, how do you manage that? You know, it's it's really hard, especially for my husband and I. We are the type that, you know, we've hung out in the outfield and just kept to ourselves. We've been blessed again to be on these teams where it's, it's unacceptable. You just don't do it and it's not tolerated and it's not going to happen. Um, and I think that stems from even in college, you, you have these coaches recruit not only their, those kids, but their families. And I think it's, I always come from the mindset. I didn't want to embarrass my children. Like, I don't want to embarrass my family name. I don't want to embarrass, you know, our family or my organization. So when you play against other teams, you're just like, Oh, these kids, these poor kids, you think, and it's more, you think, because it's the funniest thing is these kids are the great kids. And then they have these crazy parents and the kids are usually for the most part, so sweet and so nice. And then the parents get a little crazy, but you see that more on the younger side. And as you get a little bit more experience and as you get older, um, it seems to go away. But like you said, you, there are still those parents out there, even in high school, you still hear about it now. Um, and you still hear, I don't see it as much in college at all anymore. Um, you hear it from the fans, but <laughs> you don't hear it from the parents anymore, but I think it does. You see it a lot when in the twelves, fourteens. Yeah. You see it a little bit more. So it is interesting. You're right. It is a lot of those younger parents. It's crazy. And now yeah. I think in the social media world too, and it's um, it almost becomes like an arms race of like, well, my daughter is getting these right. offers, and it's like, should my daughter be getting that? Like, it, yeah, yeah, it's tough. It's, it's, it's tough, tough out there. It is. It's very tough, and it's tough. It, you know. You don't, it, it's like, you want to be proud of your, of your kid and your child and, and their accolades and everything. But um, sometimes it's like, you don't, you don't want to, I don't want to compete against anybody. My kid is not your kid. They're, everyone's different. Mm-hmm. Everybody has a different path. Everyone has a different journey. And I've always thought about softball and this whole thing is it's, this is a marathon. It is not sprint. I mean, it is a long time and it's a long journey. And you see the kids that have peaked when they were in 12s and 14s. And then you see the kids who are peaking later. Everybody has their own path. And, you know, you hear the cliche of, you know, they're women, we need to support them. And, and it is, they're kids, they're girls. We, we should be supporting them instead of tearing them down and, and building their confidence because everyone's path is completely different. It's such a, you're living it, right? Yeah. You're with, all, yes. with all three, you yeah, are absolutely. living it. I'm going to, I know you got to get back to work. So I'm going to do this uh, quickly. <laughs> okay. What is the, um, the most nervous mom moment you've ever had in the stands? Probably the world series. Looking back. I mean, when I'm at with the bat busters, it was probably when we were playing PGF or Alliance, like, you know, then, but but now looking back, you know, it's, it's, it's the world series because you're at this, at the highest point that you can get for, for them at this point. Um, and it's, it's nerve wracking. You play one game, you know, in travel ball, sometimes you play five, six games, right. You know, yeah. like, how did we just do that? <laughs> you play one game now and I'm like, Oh my God, I'm exhausted. This is just, I mean, you get home and you're just like, I got to go to bed. I got it. Like it's, it's a hundred degrees and it's, it's so stressful. It's, it's fun though. I wouldn't trade it for the world, but it is, it's, 
you know, so it's just at, at that moment though, you know, again, like when you're playing Alliance, so you're, you know, you are definitely um, like, oh gosh, you know, even when, even when Taylor wasn't playing them in the championship game, I'm cheering and screaming for the girls and let's go, you know? So it's, <laughs> it's fun. tough for you guys. Yeah. Yes. What about, and I, goodness, you've probably had a, a million, but um, what's one of your proudest moments of when you just being a mom out there watching? Proudest moments was, you know, they, they make so many plays and individual plays and, and teammates, but my proudest moment is how my girls are such great teammates. They, they are, it's not a home run. It's not a walk off. It's not a grand slam. It's none of that. It's just being the best teammate you can be. And that makes me proud. I, I, I love um, seeing and hearing your daughter was so sweet. She's so good to the girls, blah, blah, blah. That's what I like to hear. That makes me most proud because that's what you hope to raise them. And I think that's going to take them farther in life because let's face it, sports is a, it's a small window, but you want to take everything that you learned from it, camaraderie, teammates, being honest, being trusting people. That's what's going to take you further in life. I love that. What's a number one thing a softball parent should, in, a travel ball softball parent should invest in? What's a, what's a secret thing like got you through? Probably a cart, a really good cart. cart. Don't go cheap on the carts. You need those to pull out your food, your coolers, your, coolers. your <laughs> bats come and go, gloves come and go. You have to buy those. Those are things you have to buy. I mean, that's, that's, you can't get away from those cleats. You have to buy, but as a parent and, and you need, and probably now I'd say an electric car. <laughs> <laughs> buy an electric car with the gas prices they are in California, you know, traveling everywhere. <laughs> I wish there part. was the smart, there you go, something small and come back, but that uh, is funny. Yeah. Somebody's going to build it. Like that is a whole world of its own oh, with the wagons is. and coolers. Yeah. What is, uh, what's one thing well, we can end with this one. What's one thing you would go back and tell yourself uh, when you were just getting into this crazy world of our softball travel world? What's uh, what would you tell your, your younger mom self? Well, I probably use what Amanda Lorenz's dad um, said to us. Tiare was, oh my gosh, this scrawny little kid playing. I think she was in eighth grade and Mike pulled her up to the 18th. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going to be a disaster. What are you doing? And he's done it for a few girls. And Amanda, he was, we were just sitting there by ourselves and we're just kind of like, oh my gosh, what are we doing here? We're with Melissa Palmino and all these, you know, Amanda Lorenz, the snows, like just, oh my gosh. So we're sitting there and um, Danny Lorenz comes up to us and he probably would never even remember, but he's like, you know, just talking to us and he came up and introduced himself. Like it was really great because then that moment on, we knew that's what we had to do to other parents. But he said, you know, just, just enjoy this moment. Enjoy it. It goes by so fast and don't rush it. Let just let it, let it take its course. Just, just enjoy it. And he knew what he was talking about because, you know, Amanda was already a senior and she's going to Florida. And I think that was, it was just, we thought, oh my gosh, what a nice man. You know, he came literally out on his way to talk to us and we, we never forgot that. We never forgot that. That's cool. And pass it on. That's, pass it on. Yeah. Just enjoy does it go by, it. Does it go it by fast? fast? Yeah. And take your time and, and, and love it and have fun with it. Well, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us. I'm really excited for, uh, for parents to get to, to just share it. You are passing it on right now and passing it on to, to many other parents who are just starting their journeys or right in the middle of it. So, yeah. and your daughters are a true blessing and Aww. just, I know they're both great softball players, but they're great people too. Thank you, Jamie. I appreciate it. Well, thanks for Good joining fun. us on the, the car ride home. Yeah, I loved it. It was great. Hey, guys. We hope you're enjoying the Car Ride Home podcast. Hopefully, we're filling the air and making your car ride home a little bit more enjoyable. Please be sure to subscribe to our podcast on Spotify, Apple, or YouTube, and leave us a review. If you have any special guest or request that you'd like to, to hear or have us bring a guest or a story onto the podcast, 
shoot us an email, info at the alliancefastpitch.com. We'd love to hear from you. 